Victoria is doing this. Um, hi, uh, I am Gabriela Sanchez Silva, my PhD student. Thank you very much. I'm a PhD student at um, the Exhibition Research Lab uh, at uh, um, Liverpool School of Arts. Uh, I have a huge presentation, as everyone else here. I timed myself before. I hope I can make it. Uh, so, please with me. Let's let's go. Uh, um, just to say, I'm actually studying uh, radical pedagogies inside uh, biennials and contemporary art biennials. So this is like I'm, I'm slightly out of my field, but I'm 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 going to I'm 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 bringing this to you because, uh, as you can say, this is going to be part of part of my journey as a researcher as well too. So. The colonial approaches in large scale contemporary art exhibitions. Uh, so from the history of making cultural authority perspective and exhibition studies, the contemporary art research field deals with constant changes in methodologies, models, institutional critique. Uh, this presentation is a small selection of the colonial practices applied by curators, artists, and institutions during three large scale art exhibitions across Europe in 2022, which is the 5th, 9th Venice Biennial, Documenta 15, and Manifesta 14. The term decolonial uh, translates to contemporary art research as part of one of the most recent turns explored by the field after the conceptual turn, discursive turn, educational turn, social turn, and the colonial turn. So just for you to understand where it sits somehow for the contemporary art studies. Uh, the colonial authority explores strategies by artists, curators, and institutions to approach cultural gaps or inequalities in the practice of exhibitions or projects, or also like gaps in the art, art history. On um, tackling inequality, you are turning the voiceless into protagonists, inserting artists into the art history timeline, usually for male artists, and giving space to parallel narratives to Euro or Westernized vision of culture. Therefore, there's a recognition of intersectionality uh, um, as it appears as a motto for us inside the contemporary art uh, studies and a wide use of transdisciplinary practices as well. And also the recognition that we have to uh, get rid of this uh, uh, attributes of low and high art that we have since the modern it's late. Uh, the exhibition uh, that I'm going to present here, they don't approach explicitly the colonial themes. But uh, since we are in the, the colonial turn era, uh, the framework that touches it, it doesn't anyway. Uh, just a quick introduction to you uh, for you to understand the context on that. How about large scale exhibitions? Uh, those are types of ex exhibitions that happen every two years as biennials or three years as triennials or five years as documenta. Uh, they are very really kind of a fast paced mode of consumption and production like ex exhibition that very really different from the model of museums that we have. And they flourished across the globe, especially in the 1990s, in which we call biennialization, biennialization, sorry, uh, uh, in uh, art history. Uh, but they also like sometimes called it Germany machine, sometimes community catalysts. This is actually actually a, a map from 2018 from on curating that shows around 200 uh, exhibitions. And actually nowadays we have around 326 uh, biennials worldwide. Um, the Venice Biennial was the first of its type. It started in 1859 uh, and it started as somehow like a a concept of the world exhibitions uh, in which you have like invitations by countries. So the countries have some sort of pavilions uh, where they show like a uh, new work. Um, so since 1907, uh, the, in Jardini in Venice, they have like different pavilions. So the actually countries build it up spaces for the exhibitions. So there you have like Belgium, Hungary, Germany, Great Britain, uh, France and Russia. But today Venice Biennial has 30 pavilions in the Jardini, but also representation of 68 countries. Uh, that's why it's considered the Olympic, only Olympics of um, contemporary art. Uh, since the beginning of uh, it, it, um, its works, uh, it has like a parallel exhibition besides the pavilions. Uh, two important thing, facts that for me are important in this, this discussion today is that in 1922, there was like a big exhibition of um, masks, of um, uh, African masks. There was like a really kind of tackling the hole in the continent of Africa. And it was considered too ethnographic and not artistic enough for uh, for this is like a so hundred year ago hundred years ago we have this discussion and also in 1934 uh, was uh, Venice Biennial stage the first meeting of Benito Mussolini and uh, Hitler just to tell like a little bit about the structure of that I have selected three national pavilions to talk about today 
First is the Polish Pavilion. The Polish Pavilion has this title, Rich in the World, uh, by uh, Malgorica Margatas, which is the first uh, Roma uh, artist representing one pavilion uh, at um, the Venice Biennial in the history. So she uh, worked uh, uh, like re resembling the Palazzo Ciafona in Ferrara, and she created these uh, big panels uh, made of fabric uh, in a kind of um, in, in uh, sewing them. Uh, and this is a very kind of a, a register of uh, everyday life or the, the symbolic of the Roma people uh, across time, also like introducing the symbolism and the importance of women in their culture. The other pavilion is uh, the United States Pavilion that uh, was represented by the artist Simone Lee. Uh, it's called Severity, uh, which has these uh, kind of uh, characteristics of uh, the African diaspora and brings also all across the works uh, the black female subject subjectivity. It has from like large scale to videos as well too, as you can see here. Uh, this is a small video performance uh, on which uh, Simon Lee uh, uh, kind of performs a ritual in Baga uh, um, in Guinea. And this is a series of uh, ceramics works and bronze that she takes the curry shells as a symbol and reshapes them. The other pavilion I'm talking to talk, talk about is Brazilian pavilion uh, of the artist Jonathan Andrade that works with this idea of using uh, common daily life expressions. Uh, and he makes a joke about um, this, this expression calling entrar por um ouvido e sair por um outro, meaning entering from one ear, getting out from the other ear, which means like, you know, don't take care of that really much. Uh, but the installation is very interesting, brings like loads, more than 200 of these expressions, says, and metaphors uh, in a way to kind of materialize the poetic of everyday life. Uh, I think my favorite one is like this one, Caraj Paisagem, which is like landscape face. Uh, this is like the translation from to English, which it will be like most more or less like poker face in English, um, which is like says like how we are kind of avoiding to show any emotion, even though there's like a tricky situation going on. Uh, from the main exhibition, uh, I selected five artists that the curator Cecilia Almani presents in a form of like reinserting them into the history of art. So very important woman that kind of been erased. One is Dodamagno, which is like an Italian uh, artist uh, that work with a process called uh, programming art or programmed art. So she had lots of like texts about it, which is basically kind of a base of uh, how we kind of think digital art today. Uh, other one is Toyen, uh, as a pseudonym from Marin Chermanonova. Uh, and Toyen was a part of the surrealism process in France. And she worked very much with the idea of like tweaking positions of sexuality. Uh, she was herself like a, a, a person that was non-binary at the time, and all her work is it's uh, is like very queer as well too. Another one is Gisele Presinus, uh, which is Turkish, but she also like worked with the surrealists, working with a very different kind of uh, construction of fictional narratives and creating this uh, character of the Brelin family and which Brelin is the kind of this domestic hero that fights against the patriarchal regime. And this is in the 60s in a way that works with like a very, lots of like visuals around too. Other one, I'm sorry, it's really quick, I know, it's Mini Evans, uh, that is an um, artist that uh, she doesn't have an academic like formation, but she works with this kind of uh, cosmology and religious symbology and chimerical creatures and botanical uh, forms as well too. Uh, I think the last one that I have here is uh, Mili Cavanero from Italy as well too, that works with like a spiritual mode of what used in the OGA board, you know, like this board to talk with the spirits uh, and as like messages from extraterrestrial. So it's a kind of very interesting her work. Um, so the, the Bainio, Venice Bainio is open until, uh, sorry? Oh, so time. I have to close. Okay, okay, so quickly. This is Documenta. This is one Grupa. Uh, this is a, a group from Documenta that's, um, of course, I couldn't make it all. Uh, just very important if you do have interest about uh, discussions of racism and Semitism, they have a look and Google Documenta and one Grupa. They're the first collective of Indonesia to uh, create Documenta. 
uh, there's been like a lot of crazy things happening in Documenta this year, from like having an Aboriginal embassy to being accused of, of anti-Semitism just because they're inviting groups from Palestine. But also, I think this is the most important thing to say about Documenta. I'm, I'm not exotic, I'm exhausted. I think it's one of the best phrases from them. And closing by, I just wanted to quickly talk about uh, Pristina, which is a Manifesto 14, uh, was staged in Pristina this year. Uh, which is a very interesting kind of itinerary form of uh, exhibition that took like four years, like of loads of money and put like in Pristina to put Pristina in the contemporary art world. And this is like a queer takeover of Rugger Dredinoni on turning into like this pink, beautiful color, the Tito um, monuments in the middle of the city. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gabrielle. It's fascinating. <laughs>